Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bad bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow1Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man. IBF has given Earl Spence a injury or medical exception and also a mandatory exception. They said they've been in contact with the WBC, and the WBC is first for the mandatory shot when Earl Spence comes back. And that uh, Q Doba, the guy who beat Luis Colazo, I can't pronounce his name, uh, Earl Spence, IBF mandatory, and Sergey Lipies both wrote letters to the IBF, if I understood it right now. I'll link the article in the description so you can check it out yourself from ESPN. They both wrote letters to the IBF saying that they were willing to fight each other for the IBF interim title fight. So the IBF ordered a title shot before, between Q Doba and Sergey Lipies. Um, they got until February 9th to make to negotiate, and then it will go to purse bid. So let's talk a little bit about it. We back, good fella Sports TV. Hit that subscribe button, bell, bell icon button, share the video. And like I said before, I called this months ago. You know, had Andy Ruiz won, he would dropped his IBF belt, and the Wilder Fury 2 pay per view card would have been that much juicier because you would have got Kanowski and Pueb for the IBF belt and the intern belt for Qdoba and, and, um, uh, Sergey Lipias, excuse me. And I told you guys that Earl Spence was going to get a medical exception and that I heard that he wasn't going to be ready to fight. But this is why they gave him a medical exception. This is why he, he got a mandatory exception because they talked uh, talked it over with the WBC and the IBF, you know, said they can go first. Now, it remains to be seen if Earl Spence uh does a mandatory defensive WBC title since Manny Pacquiao jumped in there. Now, um, I'm pretty sure the WBC with a check can make Danny Garcia wait or the Ivan Rennick where the winner wait. That is the mandatory. That's the title limiter. Whoever win next week, I think it is, January 25th, between Danny Garcia and Ivan Rennick produces Errol Spence's mandatory. Now, Danny was already a mandatory, but Earl Spence got injured in a car accident two and a half weeks after he defeated Sean Porter. I think that was September 28th. So um, now, you know, that Lippy S and Qdoba, they both willingly sought out each other to fight. So, you know, more than likely this fight may or may not happen on the Wilder Fury 2 undercard, depending on how fast Tom Brown and uh, top rank Carm Reddy, uh, or is it Todd DeBuff, negotiate. Okay, but it's a good fight. Um, obviously, uh, I looked at Qdoba's uh, resume, and in the amateurs, his amateur resume on box work was terrible. He had a losing record. He really hadn't beat nobody other than Colazzo, but he got some good foot movement, and we know Eric Bonet uh, gave Lippies a lot of problems with his foot movement, and I think uh, Lippies have came a long way since getting leaving Buddy McGarf and getting with Joe Goose, and so um, I think it's a good fight. Um, I think you know Qdoba. He got some. He got he got some things that could trouble Lippies. Lippies has problems with footwork. Usually, when you you put two you know, those Eastern European guys in the ring together, you get fireworks. So I think Lippietz is a more seasoned fighter. I think he's improved. Remember, he was a kickboxer, and that's why his footwork so bad. If his footwork was better, he would have defeated Mikey Garcia. But it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? If they get his footwork together and kind of, you know, get him on his toes and, you know, bring his legs in a little bit, he may be one of the more, either, one of the more even more, more devastating punchers in the welterweight division. But, um... But let's talk about Earl Spence for a second, and I kind of continue to get my synopsis on Qdoba and Sergey Lipiets. But uh, yeah, he has a me he basically gave him a medical exception, and you no, know, both fighters was willing to fight each other. So uh, it depends on what he's going to do. But after he defends his mandatory mandatory for the WBC or his next fight, he has ninety days to negotiate a fight with Lipiets or Qdoba. All right, so people saying, oh, he going to fight Terrence Crawford this year in 2020. Nah, it's probably not going to happen. But depending on when he fight and he come back healthy, he may have to defend his belt in, I don't know, uh, negotiating in 90 days and maybe you're looking at four or five months. So if he do come back in May or June and fight Manny Pacquiao, so you're looking at, uh, you're looking at September, he probably negotiate something. So he'll probably be back in December to defend his belt. 
If he fight in July, he probably won't be back to 2021. So Earl Spence, if he don't fight his IBF mandatory, I mean his WBC mandatory next, he would then he would then fight. If he fight Pacquiao, he would fight Pacquiao. Then he probably will fight the winner of this fight. Then he would probably fight the WBC mandatory and Danny Garcia. So at the end of the day, you're looking at Earl Spence. He could be tied up until 2022, and that's what PBC wanted. You know what I'm saying? If he fights twice this year, then a Crawford fight maybe can happen in 2021. You know? So at the end of the day, they're going to keep him busy. But then again, he got the win, the comeback fight. Nobody knows if he 100%. You know, people saying, oh, he can beat this guy 50%. No, I made that mistake early in my career thinking 50% of this fighter can beat that fighter because he's bigger. Pacquiao know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Pacquiao... It's going to dominate Earl Spence in negotiations. If if Sean Porter got 50-50 and Mikey got 50-50, imagine what Manny Pacquiao about to do. You know what I'm saying? You know, he about to do what he want to do. No testing, this, that, and the third. And, you know, Earl Spence is going to have to just really dig down and, and come through. But the thing about it is he's not going to be able to box Pacquiao like he did Mikey. At least early on, down the stretch, he will be able to, and Pacquiao kind of run out of gas. But... Uh, we're going to have to see, but right now for people inquiring about when he going to unify, if he going to unify the division, he got mandatories. He had mandatories before the uh, the issue. That's why he was fighting Danny Garcia. Then he would have the IBF mandatory. So the IBF guy, a fool for thought real quick or quick uh, footnote, the IBF guy was going around Reno, Nevada, telling people Qdoba, he was telling people that Earl Smith was going to fight him next. So before Pacquiao came into the and came into the fold, now if the Pacquiao fight don't happen, he was gonna fight the IBF mandatory first. You know what I'm saying? But now that he gonna get Pacquiao, now you know or he could get Pacquiao. Now he gonna just go into that fight. He was gonna tune up, and I was saying that man, he was going to tune up versus the IBF guy. What's the smart move? He wasn't gonna fight Danny Garcia next. Danny Garcia was going to be later in 2020 because Danny Garcia fight in January and then coming back in like May or June. That's common sense. That's not going to happen. Danny fight once, twice a year. So it was going to be Danny fight in January, then probably getting Spence around December, November type. And Spence was going to tune up versus the IBF mandatory. But like I said before, if either one of the IBF or Sir, the IBF guy and Qdoba and Sergey Lipiets pull out of this fight, they rankings drop below 10 in the IBF for six months. So they both wrote a letter saying that they want to smoke with each other. But if somebody pull out negotiations or or somebody don't negotiate the right amount of way, then uh it's over with. You know, they they gon they go they ranking gonna drop below ten for six months, so the stakes are high. So neither one of them gonna garnish uh that much money. You know what I'm saying? Neither one of them gonna, gonna pull that much cash. So it should work. Hopefully it land on the water. Fury 2 undercard. I'm pretty sure they already been in the discussions and they've already been training for each other. If they promoters both have them right letters. So I think the undercard for Wilder Fury 2 is going to be straight. The only problem, the only problem that there is, is that um, probably for some people is that they smaller guys in the Mayor Nevetes is supposed to be another guy that's supposed to be on the undercard as well too. You know what I'm saying? Or the televised portion of the pay-per-view card. So, you know, for people hoping to get a heavyweight undercard, that ain't happening because Jarrell Miller signed his his, uh, his deal with top rank too late. But, uh, you know, other other than that, man, as far as the fight, it's a good fight. You know, you got a guy that box a move that's rangy, and those guys have given, you know, Lippy as problems. Just looking at just looking at the Bonet fight, those guys gave Lippy as problems. Lippy has got a problem with rangy guys. Uh, Qdoba is, is a... Uh, is a rangy guy. He can box. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can throw hard shots. He 26 years old. He got height on him. 5'10", they say in the years. And, um, you know, he got not sure what his reach is. But, like I said before, he going to give Lippiets a little bit of problems if Lippiets don't work on his footwork. If Lippiets work on his footwork and they able to get him on his toes a little bit or cut the ring off a lot better and not follow guys around the ring... It should be interesting. Lippiest at a three-inch uh, height disadvantage. So this is probably why top rank is, is so confident in in in, in, in Qdoba. You know what I'm saying? When 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 people go out there and put their mandatory status on the line, 
It's confidence. And I'm pretty sure Olympias is confident because he can punch. All punchers usually are confident, especially on this level. Olympias got a good jaw, but this this dude, he fighting, you know, um, this ain't no cakewalk. You know what I'm saying? He was he was using the ring, and, and that pro- that bothers Lippiets. Guys that know how to utilize the ring, stick and move, real rangy. So him and him and Joe Goose are gonna have to work on and Lippiets got a good jab. They gotta work on getting him on his toes a little bit or cutting the ring off better. But he, his footwork is so bad. You know, it's it's improved. I noticed in, in his fights on a uh on a uh on that uh was it Pacquiao undercard, he improved a little bit, but his opponent wasn't that good. You know what I'm saying? If they can get him on his toes a little bit, bring his get his footwork together, bring it in, and kind of get him more fluid, then he one of the more dangerous guys. How with how straight his jab is and how much how good he punch, he still got a kickboxer base a little bit, if you look at his base. You know, but if he able to, to develop into a boxer base and kind of get on his toes and and, and, and and you know, he did some things versus Lamont as well too, and he able he was able to beat up Lamont. He able to cut the ring off like that, he gonna have a good chance. But Top rank is uh really really good in matchmaking. You know they 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 know how to match make. They got probably uh, Hall of Fame matchmakers over there, and they probably like it like cute over chances. But the reason I like Lippy yes is because that jab is real straight. Goosen has improved him, and he can punch. You know what I'm saying? He really can punch. So I think eventually, you know, where Colazzo wasn't able to get off because he a little bit older when he got Qdoba on the ropes. I think Sergey Lipiets will be able to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? I think Sergey Lipiets will be able to go to the body, head, and I know he ain't no southpaw like uh, Colazzo neither. But I just think his power, his jab is real straight, and I think he he have a good uh, a good chance of bringing the bacon home. But like I said before, stylistic wise, rangy guy that can use the ring. Um, that's a bad matchup for Lipiets in the past. But hey, we gotta see what happens. But right now, they they should be locked in negotiations. Hopefully, fall in the water for your two undercard. That'd be a great co feature. I know it ain't the heavyweight co feature that everybody wanted. Um, but like I said before, I, I favor Sergey Lipiets, but this is a bad style matchup for him. Tall, rangy guy to use the ring. But after Earl Spence next title defense with the WBC or next voluntary fight. Um, he gonna have to do two mandatories. If he fight Pacquiao, he got two mandatories. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, and you know, I look forward to, you know, these dudes eventually all of them mixing them up with each other. But hey, don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. Keep sharing the videos. Uh, Want to make a donation to the channel? That link's in the description. Best way to donate is share the video. Don't forget all the social media links there. I dropped the article link from Dan Rayfield and ESPN. But remember, I was talking about this a few months ago. So I do appreciate it. And let me know what y'all think about the matchup. Qdoba, Lipiets, who y'all think going to win. And who will get Earl Spence more run for his money. Uh, and also, uh, just keep looking out for, for me. Check out my boxing rumor playlist, news, NBA, NFL, the whole nine. Got an NBA video coming, so pay attention.